So we now have our matrix 3D. We have the rotate. This project still compiles. Build started. Build succeeded. We can run it. We can turn the ship. But notice <coughs> that's definitely a different looking ship than what we had before. And we did all that unit testing. And we felt good during the unit test, but there's a chance we might have screwed up the unit test and the implementation at the same time. And so what's going on here? Well, let me tell you what's going on here. <coughs> uh, remember originally when we made these vertices, we sent them down to OpenGL and said, hey, OpenGL, uh, we're going to send you down two element vertices. But now we've just changed it to three, and the reason we changed it to three is because we're trying to add that translation in at the same time that we're doing the matrix multiplication. And so OpenGL, I mean, it's, OpenGL's cool with it, but OpenGL's still looking at the vertices as two element vertices, not just uh, three element vertices. So that's what's going on. And when we get into the graphics portion of building this engine, we're going to see that it's very important to tell the graphics software and or hardware exactly what our data represents and how to interpret it in that. Uh, I didn't talk too much about Vertex a Trib Pointer when we did this OpenGL and I'm still not going to talk about it too much here. We'll save that till the graphics section. But right here this two means there's two floats per vertex. Well now we need to change that to a three. Build this, run this. OpenGL will interpret the data appropriately again and we have our ship and it rotates. All right, let me point the ship to the upper right-hand corner of the screen, hit the forward up arrow, and notice my ship is still not moving. We need to add the translation portion of our matrix in here as well. The whole reason, if you remember from a few videos back, the whole reason why we're going matrix 3D instead of matrix 2D is we can't have translation uh, represented in a two-dimensional matrix. We have to have that get that third dimension and then we look at it in 2D. Uh, just for a refresher, pull up video. Let me look in the library here. Looks like it was video 57 where I brought this tool up and uh, ooh, that doesn't, there we go. I brought this tool up and then I showed you how we can rotate the ship and move all these so on and so forth. I think eventually down here. Yep, we went 3D I showed you how that worked in 3D. So pull up video 57 if you need a refresher on why we're going 3D. That's the only way to get the translation in there using a matrix. Well, I need to say matrix 3D translate. And what do I want to translate it by? I want to translate it by the ship position. I believe it was ship position that we had. And then I want to multiply that against our rotation. So let me just bring this down. It's a little bit more readable if I do this. So we want to first hit our vertices with the rotation. Second, hit them with the translation. I'll combine that into one matrix using matrix times matrix uh, multiplication. And then we'll store the result there in op. And then op, instead of having to say ship position plus op times vert, we can just say op times vert because the op also encodes our translation as well. Now, I'm not quite sure why I wrote this like that, but we need to add a <coughs> translate function to our matrix 3D, and then we need to unit test that. Obviously, if I build this, we're going to fail because translate does not exist. So let's go build configuration manager and turn that off for now. And go to matrix 3D H. And we'll just do this as a static factory, the same as what we did with matrix 2D. Uh, matrix 2D.h here. Remember we had the rotate, and so we made this kind of static factory function here. We shall do the same thing for uh, translate. In fact, I could have just pointed out here that we have rotate Z as a factory as well on matrix 3D. Okay, here we go. Inline, static, return to matrix 3D translate. Now this is this is where we get a little bit fishy because we could translate by uh, three dimensions but remember we're drawing everything in two and the only reason why we're doing this three-dimensional matrix is we're using that third dimension as this kind of hybrid way of doing the translation I showed you back in the previous video. So <clears throat> we're still 2D on the screen, two-dimensional positions, we're not going in or out of the screen or giving any depth so I'm actually just going to say, you know what, let's translate 
Uh, I think for now we'll just say float x float y. <clears throat> we could say float z, but z has no meaning, at least not now, because we don't really have that visual depth. So I'm going to say float x float y. I could say vector 2D here, but I kind of don't want to mix up my matrix 3D and my vector 2Ds, but I could. I don't know. I mean, this design decision I'll go off of. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Let's grab this declaration, go over to our implementation file, and we have rotate, and we'll drop translate right below that. Don't need to say static, because we declared it as static. Matrix 3D, scope it appropriately, go over here. Test-driven development, so just return a matrix 3D. And we don't need to say static as well, that's true. Okay, I think that's good. Let's go over to our matrix 3D tests. Uh, construction, let's collapse these, collapse. Rotation, collapse, and matrix vector multiply. Let's put translation here right below rotation, we'll say translation. Okay, matrix 3D translator. That's a good name. It's matrix 3D translate. Uh, let's just say 4, 8. Okay, we, we want to translate the vector's tip to the position uh, 4, 8 over from where it is. We're moving it, okay? It, it's, this is probably where it makes sense to think of vectors as vertices. It's a point that we're moving, but really we are moving the tip of a vector. I showed you that in the previous video with the, or with in a previous video when I showed you that uh, GUI that allowed us to see 3D. We have our translator. Let's get a vector. 3D. We'll say victim. Victom. Victim, and we'll put our victim at negative 3 and 8. And this should be pretty straightforward. We're going to say vector 3D victim prime gets translator times victim. And then we can say expect float equal uh, victim prime your x will be something. We'll figure that out later. And in the meantime, I'm going to control L and control V those lines. We're going to do x, y, z. <clears throat> and the x, well, uh, huh? Trans what's wrong with our translate here? What's it going? Oh, it's probably finding this stuff. It shouldn't. Matrix, I just want to double check, why are we getting the red squiggies? Is that IntelliSense? No, I said float. Whatever IntelliSense. Um, so 4 plus 3 should be 1. 8 plus 8 should be 16. Uh, but then what do we do with the Z's, all right? We, we have the Z value. What should the Z value be? Well, I hate to terminate a video right in the middle of writing some unit tests and not even implementing the code to make those tests pass, but in, or in order to, th this is actually kind of a <clears throat> somewhat critical concept we'll revisit through several videos, but I think it deserves its own video and I want to talk about it and we'll have to revisit it over and over again, but what should that Z value be? Uh, what, what value should I put here? Let's talk about what it should be, why it should be that, and and some other things that go along with that. So we'll do that in the next video.